he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to one thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizes, and all men come to him. John answered and said, Now let's examine this. Let's talk about the baptism. And they came unto John and said unto him, the Rabbi, he that, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, talking about Christ, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. To let you know, not only was Christ baptized, um, he baptized people himself. Which means, he had a baptism that was unto him, even though John was living. So that killed that theory that the Lord just got baptized to give credence to John's baptism. He was baptizing while John was still alive. Now even though he didn't take people in the water himself, the disciples would wait in the water, but he would pray with them and send them in the water to be baptized in his name. Read on. 27. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye he yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. So who's the bridegroom? Christ. It says, he that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, that was John, which standeth and beareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This is my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He knew that the bridegroom had come. Who was the bridegroom? Christ. And what was Christ doing? Baptizing. Why? He was bringing new women of Israel into his marriage. You see that? He would, that, that was the, the walking down the aisle, so to speak. Him baptizing them out of that old covenant because the Lord did what? Pat threw them away. The Lord says, you're no more. So now they would come through Christ's baptism nice and clean again. Total clean. So now they're worthy to be what? Married to the bridegroom. Married to the bridegroom. Now there's more. Read on. He must increase, but I must decrease. He says, Christ must increase. John had to decrease. So John's baptism became less and less because under Christ, he baptized more than John. So as John's baptism decreased, his increased. Now you have a lot of brothers who know, about, know their Israel, can tell you the Bible back and forth, can deal with the law and everything, but they teach that the baptism of Christ is done away with. And without the baptism, you can't get into the way. Read on. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testified, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath said to his soul that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Lord didn't give the Spirit by measure to, 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 to Christ. Every other man in this earth is a certain level of understanding and measure you get. But with Christ, there was he had it without measure. Total understanding. No man can stake claim to that. Because every man, there's a measure according to what the Lord wants them to know. He gave it to Christ without measure. Read. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So if we don't believe that the Son in, in Christ, and walk after Christ, and deal with his baptism, it tell you, the wrath of God abideth on him. Okay? I'm glad you read this because this is um, this was, this was something that was talked about with me. Oh, 
okay, just relax. We told you. The, the, the Holy Spirit is working. It's fine. All right? Let's go to Matthew 22 and 1. Uh, what did you say? 25, 30, 60. Yes. 25 to the end. Now let's go to Matthew 22. We're going to start at the first verse. And we're going to take that down to the 14th verse. Can you read that for me, brother? After you write it down. Go ahead. And Jesus answered the straight unto them again by yeah. parables. We're at Matthew 22 in the first verse. When you read, just, just look around and make sure everybody has it, right? Yeah. Because I see you getting them quick, and that's a good thing. That's not a, that's a good thing. All right? Matthew 22 and 1. Read that. And Jesus answered and spoke unto them by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come into the marriage. Come on, y'all. Come into the marriage. The feast, is, the feast is being prepared. The food is smelling good. The wine is all out. The waters are there. Come on to the marriage. Read. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are... I read the same thing again. Sorry. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm and another to his merchandise. Like, there you go. That's an example. We'd be out there teaching, saying, listen, man, come to the marriage. It's like we're giving out engagements. Yo, the Lord already got the food cooked. And people do us. Read that part again. What they do? But they made light of it and went their ways. Like, man, listen, I know he's going to come, but it's things I can deal with right now. He ain't coming today. And to his farm, let me go work. I gotta make some money. Another to his merchandise. Let me go chase this, chase this cash. Because you know, I know what you're saying is true. And you know, I'll be in that wedding when it's time. Because I know the truth, or so when it when it kick in, I'll be there. Not knowing that you were supposed to be building works the whole time. When when the Lord bid you to the wedding, that's when you were supposed to come. Not once you've seen everything go down, because that's that's the parable of the five silly virgins and the five wise virgins. The five silly virgins knew too, but they were just waiting until they seen the signs. They're going to get in with the five wise ones, while the five wise ones were, were sacrificing the whole time. They was always dealing with class, always through rain, snow, always was they always was there. Then you're going to have the five silly ones come. Oh, listen, Lord, you know you you knew what I was dealing with, <laughs> right? No, we want to finish reading. This is Christ bringing you to the wedding, though. We're just vessels, we're just mouthpieces, and then we want to get into the wedding ourselves, mind you. It's not like it's not like we got a guaranteed seat because this is a race. We have to go to the end. Because if we stop, he'll just have somebody else talk. <laughs> he's going to get his word out and he's going to bid who need to be in this wedding to this wedding. Right? Read on. And the remnant took his servant. What verse you at? Six. When, we all, when, when I speak and you go back, make sure you holler out the verse. Matthew 22 and 6. And then keep on going, alright? Go ahead. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Go ahead. But when the king heard their...